Playing white, Tony Miles of England, playing black, Bent Larsen from Denmark. Bent Larsen seeded number one in this tournament. This is the first game of the second group. And Tony Miles comes here with the most amazing record. He's won, come first, that is, in the last seven tournaments he's played in, and that in a year in which he's also beaten the world champion, Anatoly Karpov. And yet, so strong is this tournament this year, he's not even seeded number one. Bent Larsen is that. The game's already started, in fact, been going for some little time in a fairly slogging match, it looks like, being uh, with me, as usual, Bill Hartston. Bill, is it going to be a hard slog all the way through, or are we going to get a flash of brilliance and a win? It's always a hard slog between these two. Yes. Slightly dramatic, this should be the first game in this group, in fact, because this could decide the group, one would have thought. Yes, I think this, this game is perhaps the most decisive of the, of the whole tournament, the two of the, the real favourites to win the Master Game Trophy. Who do you fancy? What's Miles' record against Larson? Recently, Miles has a very good record against Larson. Uh, he's won several games in the last couple of years, but uh, Larson's always anxious to get his own back. Right, they've got up to move 27, I think. Tell me what happened, what the beginning was like, and what happened in the early stages. There's an absolutely extraordinary opening variation. L Larson has the knack of cobbling together variations the way a, a master chef prepares great dishes. After Miles' normal first move of 1d4, uh, Larson's opening ingredient is borrowed from the French defence, e6. That's a defence to e4, not d4. And his second move comes from something completely different, the Nimzo Indian defence. The bishop developed to b4. In the Nimzo Indian, you do that on move 3, not move 2. But already Larson's third move, a5. This is pure Larson flinging up a rook's pawn early in the game. And now this is a position that I can't remember ever seeing before in master chess. Really most unusual at this stage of the game. And here comes something from the Dutch defence. So Larsen's really playing an extraordinary concoction here, bits of everything. Quite sensibly, Miles is just adopting a wait-and-see strategy, developing quietly behind his own pawns. And now Larsen's at last saying what he's going to do with these central pawns. He's advanced the D-pawn. And now the e-pawn comes up as well. Now the pawn structures change completely. You suddenly realise that he is after space in the centre after all. Always try to conquer the centre in the early stages of the game. I'm putting the question to this bishop, which must exchange. And Larson goes further forward. to establish this pawn wedge in the centre now. And this is what the, the whole game is going to be about. It's, it's normal advice not to make too many pawn moves in the early stages of the game because you have to get your pieces out as well. But Larson's already made seven pawn moves in his first ten and that's, that's way over the odds. He's, he's conquered a lot of space in the centre but really he now has to defend this extra space. And he hasn't developed his uh, queen side at all? No, he's thinking about getting his pieces out later. For the next 17 moves or so, the struggle for mastery of the centre of the board and opportunities to strike were sought by both players until we reached this position. Bill, what did you make of this after White's 27th? Well, Larson seems not only to have defended his, his extra space in the centre, which he gained in the opening, but he's threatening to increase it. He advanced the G-pawn as well to add to this great wedge, and now he's really trying to build up a kingside attack. Now, with White's last move, he brought the knight from C3 to B5, and he'd like to come in, threatening to come in on D6 with check, checking the king and attacking the rook too. So, Larson's got to take care of that, of that threat, but I still rather like his position. Right, well, it's Larson black to move. Let's see what he does about Miles' last move. Yeah, natural move, of course, but I, I'm i sorry he played it. Well, okay, now I don't want to allow knight d6 check. I have to play knight 
e8. I just have to look. He has queen h5 check, but what can the queen do alone? He'll be kicked back later. Now, knight e8 is all right. Okay, that's stem the temporary flow. What next, though? Queen h5 check is nothing. I, suppose I can't really pile up on the c-file. a4 is a good positional move, but really it's time to start getting some of my pawns off black squares. I'd like to play f3. Hmm, maybe I wish I hadn't... Maybe I wish I'd had the other rook on c1. Yeah, I think f3's right anyway. Open up the position a bit, try and make my bishop a good piece. Yeah, f3, time to try and fight for the initiative. Well, I think I must exchange rooks now. The only question is, should I take on f3 first? If I take on c1, play the other rook to c8, maybe he plays rook f1. Don't like that too much. So, I probably have to take on f3 first. Yes, e takes f3. Shame, I was hoping he'd let me take on e4, then I might have got a really dangerous initiative. Still, I have to recapture with the pawn because my knight's hanging. G takes f3. And no doubt I have to exchange rooks. That makes my king safe, and uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise he's probably going to get some attack. In a way, he's threatening queen d3. I must exchange rooks, yes. Rook takes c1, check. Mm, yeah. Well, I've got to recapture that. Rook takes c1. And why think of other moves? Quickly, rook c8. Yes, he's still trying to exchange down to queen and knight against queen and bad bishop. Still, I'd like to keep a set of rooks on, but I can't really concede the c-file. So, it's got to be rook takes c8. Well, that's nice. I have the c-file now. Queen takes c8. And now I have to block the c-file. Knight c3 attacks d5. If he plays queen c4, then I can take and my pawns are good and so is my bishop. Yes, I must block the c-file anyway. Knight c3. Yes, I'm tempted to play queen c4, but I think it's bad. Queen c4 he takes, and he plays d5. Also, b6 will be weak. No, that's impossible. That's impossible. Knight f6 is, uh, knight f6 is natural. What else is there? Queen c6? No, I like the queen on c8. It threatens in the direction of g4, h3. Knight f6 must... Yes, knight f6. Hmm, well, queen d3 looks a good consistent move. How's he going to defend his f-pawn? If he plays f4, I'll have e4, and then I'll start moving in the centre. If he plays king g6, then his king's on the end of the diagonal, and one day maybe, or maybe very quickly, I get an e4. Yes, interesting. Queen d3. Well, now I have to calculate exactly f4 looks good because my knight on e6 wants to get a good square near his king. f4, he plays e4, I play g4, nobody knows what happens. It looks very good. e5, I can take on f3. My knight from e6 gets to g5, maybe to e4. This is very complicated. But king g6, well, king g6 is playable. e4, I can play knight f4. That is, maybe that is the safe line. No, on king g6 he comes with a bishop, maybe even to e7. Not logical, I'm fighting against that bishop, of course. I must play f4. Ooh, hello. Something's happening. Well, e4 is what I want to play. What's going to happen? If he takes it, I take with a pawn. I have a massive pawn sensor, so he wouldn't play that. I can't take on f4 because he takes with the knight and then my, my position's a wreck. The queen f5 doesn't work because it would take on e3 and the e-pawn will be too strong. I've got to play e4. 
Something nasty is going to happen to this position very quickly, though. But e4 is forced. Yeah. It's interesting enough to take on e4 because when he takes with the pawn, I must have some threats against his king. But but his center is very strong. I must attack immediately with g4. Oh dear! I was hoping for something like taking on e4 or queen c4. Now what the hell's going on? e5 is the natural move, but that does fix my pawns on black squares if it doesn't win. Taking on d5, and then his knight comes to g5. That's out of the question. What's he planning on e5? Oh, he's going to take on f3 and threaten queen g8 check, mating me. Or maybe he's going to play queen g8 first. Let's see. e5. If he takes on f3, what can I do? I must recapture. Queen g8 check. King somewhere. Knight g4, I don't know. King f1, knight g4. It's very messy. But not so bad, because d5 is always hanging. What about queen g8 instead of taking on f3? Probably I have to move my king still. I don't know, but what else can I play? I can't take on d5. Taking on g4 can't be right. I must play e5. I don't like it much, but I have to play it. e5. So, what do you think of it at the moment, Bill? Uh, Tony certainly doesn't sound terribly happy about anything. Oh, it's suddenly really come to life, this game. After this blocked centre we had from the opening, that, that's just completely dissipated, and suddenly everything's happening. I haven't the faintest idea what's going on, really. Black certainly has these, these two knights, this queen, all pointing in the direction of the white king, and these pawns opening up lines towards it. It looks as though this king's really going to have to face a tremendous attack. But what's going on in the centre of the board is anyone's guess. Well, we don't know what's happening. Miles says he doesn't know what's happening. Let's go back to the game with Larson to play his 35th moves of black and see if he knows what's happening. Well, I suppose I take on f3. Queen g8 doesn't make sense because the queen is already very good on c8 and queen g8, he just moves his king away. On c8, the queen can go to g4 or h3 and if his knight goes away, I have queen c1. The queen is good there, so I should just take on f3. Mm -hmm. Now, I can take, but maybe is it more accurate to move the king? But where, where? H1 looks silly now. The F pawn would be too strong. F1 maybe. Doesn't look right. Doesn't look right at all. And he's going to come in with his knight. I don't know. No, I could just play queen g8 and I take. I wonder. Maybe it's best. Oh no, if I go to F1, he has knight g5. Is that true? I don't know. I really don't know. Simpler to take. Queen takes f3. And now I think I cannot take on d4 because he takes on f4. Well, then I can play queen g4 check, but I certainly get no winning chances. Maybe a draw. But knight g5 looks normal. It's very good there. Yes, must be knight g5. Yes, this is beginning to look horrible. These knights and the queen are all flooding at my king. Ah, oh, dear, 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 dear. Why do I put the queen? G2? Oh, then he's going to get F3 with tempo. God, how am I stopping that F pawn even? Knight H3 check will come. The queen could come anywhere. But everything's coming in. This is serious. F1. F1. F1's a useful square. It stays on F4. It stays on the same file as his king. That can be useful in the long run. And now if his knight from F6 has to move, maybe I'll take on D5 and then perhaps I'll be able to get my queen into activity on C4. It must be best, I think. But this position's getting terrible. Queen F1. Yes. Now it's a very important decision. Should I play queen g4 check or knight h3 check? Both protect my f-pawn and bring my pieces closer to his king. Knight, knight h3 check, king 
H1, knight G4. That's interesting. I'm threatening knight F2 check. What do I do? He plays queen F3. I, th I think that's his only move. Queen F3. A knight check. He goes to G2. I can check with the queen on G8. He goes to F1. I can check him on G1. He goes to E2. And what have I got? This is terrible. If there's nothing there, then, then d5 is hanging with check. Yes, it's not so easy. I don't see it. I think queen g4 is safer. But this is a very critical position, certainly. Knight h3, king h1, knight g4, queen f3 once more. No, I don't see it. His king escapes. He's lucky. Well, okay, queen g4 check is a good move anyway. Queen g4 check. Yes, that's what I was most frightened of. Knight h3, I seem to be okay. No, I could play queen g2, but then he would just play f3. And I think I'd lose a piece stopping the f-pawn. So I must play king h1. Nothing else. Everything's coming towards my king, but there's no choice. King h1. Yes. How is it now? Can I sacrifice a piece? f3, take on f6, knight h3. No, I don't think it's good enough. I'm threatening f2, but he has several knight moves here. He gets defense. Knight d1, for instance. I don't see it. I think I must go to e4. That looks natural. Knight f6 to e4. Yeah, well, it would be nice to take that off, but then my position is just terrible for no compensation. I've got to go pawn snatching. I have to take the one on d5. It's my only hope. Then maybe I can expose his king a little. Just keep my fingers crossed. Knight takes d5. Another important choice, knight f3 or knight h3. Knight h3, he plays bishop e1. It's not so clear. Knight f3 looks very good. Many threats against his king. Well, I have to, have to make a move. I'll try knight f3. I'm really not sure. Knight f3. Hmm. I didn't really expect that, but it does look quite strong now it's arrived. Now, one more move to make before the time control. Still, I've got plenty of time. Should it be? No. Is he threatening anything? Maybe he's threatening knight g3 check, pawn takes, queen takes. Maybe. I always I could flick in e6 check, I'm not sure. What can I move? How about e6 check, e6 check? That's the sort of move that might disconcert him. He's only got a few minutes left for his last move. e6 check. If he takes, he can't take with a queen because then I take his knight on f3 and I'm completely safe. Got to get rid of those wretched knights somehow. If he takes with a king, well, then at least I'm not going to have to worry about knight d2 because I'll have some forks with queen checks on the king e file. If he moves his king away, well, as I said, I don't, I haven't seen a clear threat for him yet on the king side, so I can play e7. Pawns on the seventh are always strong. It's bound to create some trouble. Yes, I think that's right. E6 check. Yes, I guess I have to take that. It's a little unpleasant. My king should be in a safe spot where he could never come out with his queen and check it. But I have to take that pawn, I mean. Yes, I must. King takes e6. Mm -hmm. I was rather hoping he wouldn't, but still. Uh, well, now I've got to move my knight. So I can threaten queen c4 check. I still don't see a clear threat for him. No, that's okay. Knight, to, if the knight moves, it might as well take the b pawn. At least, uh, at least that way I won't lose a, a simple ending if I ever get out. What else is there to consider? Nothing really. Yes, knight takes b6. It may not be so bad after all. Yes, 
I guess I must move my king so that his queen has no check. That means king f6. I mean, I cannot play knight g3 check. He takes, I take, queen c4 check. He has all his pieces attacking before I can mate him. I must play king f6. It's not bad. King f6. So that he has no queen check. Yes. No, no other move, really. King f6. Okay, yes, but now I can't get at him with anything else. But what's wrong with knight d7 check? He can't possibly take it because I'm, I'm absolutely safe, so he must move his king. But where? Anyway, what else can I play? Knight d7 check, but it looks good. Knight d7 check. Mm, maybe I should play king g7. King g7, maybe he plays knight e5. I think I can just as well take the knight. I really have a very strong position, but it, it's a pity I'm a pawn down. I take the knight. Queen takes d7. Really? He took it? Well, I can't be worse now. I'm a pawn up. I, mean, I, don't, I can't really be, be winning. I'm not better, because his queen and knight are so good, but I can't possibly lose, surely. Anyway, queen takes f3 is forced. Yes, and, of course, Queen F5. Now, what to do? I mean, I'm not winning. I'm probably not even better, but there's no danger of losing. I can always play. I can play Bishop E1. Then if he plays Knight G5, Bishop H4. Oh, he has a draw with Queen B1 check. But I'm in no danger. Bishop E1. Well, I can play Knight G5 now. Bishop h4, queen b1, that looks like a draw at once. Maybe I should do that. But I think I can prepare knight g5 with h6, and maybe my king likes the square h7. I don't know what I want to do, but I think h6 is a nice move. h6. What is he doing? He's crazy. What is he doing? Only Larson would play a move like that. It's ridiculous. Well, why not push my luck? His only plan is knight g5 to get some play. Let's stop it. Let's play h4. I, I still can't be better, but if he plays many more moves like that, I can be. I don't believe this. Well, I'm going to believe it. h4. A curious, Bill, how uh, Larson's apparently unstoppable attack down that has been stopped and rolled back absolutely amazing defensive achievement by miles with with queen two knights and a passed pawn rampaging around his king i think every one of his last 12 or 15 moves must have been absolutely the only move to survive amazing that he's defended this but now larson seems still to be trying to win and i don't see how that can be right when he is a pawn down during the next 15 moves uh, larson Black won back his pawn, but things rather went from bad to worse for him until we finished up in this position, with Tony Miles marching his A pawn forward towards the queening square. Let's join the game now with Tony Miles white to play. Well, he's threatening knight b4 check, so my move is obvious, king b3. King b3 is forced. Yes, if I play f3, he queens and I queen, and he gives queen f8 check. What else can I do? Queen g3 is certainly a lost ending. Better find some little trick. Difficult. Knight b6 or knight c7. Knight c7 threatens the pawn. It's bad. It's very bad. But what can I do? Well, I'll have to try it. Knight c7. Yes. No. No, I can't play a7 because he has queen b7 check. The obvious move is bishop takes f4. But no, wait, after queen d5 check, queen c4, he has queen f3 check, winning my bishop. No, that won't do at all. Uh, if this were a study, the solution would be d5. Wait, I think it is the solution. d5, what does he play? It interferes with his queen on the diagonal. He can't take on a6 because I recapture with check. And I'm seriously threatening to play d d6, attacking the knight, or just going to d7 and d8 with check. Can he play? If he plays queen takes d5, I 
take his queen, he plays knight takes, and I play bishop a5, and then he can't stop my a-pawn. He plays f3, I play a7, we both queen, and then I play queen, a8, queen f8, check winning his queen. That's beautiful. That's just wonderful. Yes, d5, beautiful move. Well, that's the move I have stopped during the whole game. Of course, I cannot take with the queen now. He exchanges and plays bishop a5, and he wins my queen with the queen f8 check again. The only chance... No, maybe queen g3. No, he takes it, and a7, and that is lost. His bishop, at the same time it stops my pawns, does nasty things on the other side. That must lose. Let me try knight takes d5. There's hardly another move. Knight takes d5. Well, a7, surely the move. That was the idea. I've given up my pawn, but I've gained two tempi. Nothing else makes sense. a7. If his knight moves, I'll pick it off with the queen. a7. Yeah. Knight c7. He gives check on c3. So... Queen g8 is the only move. It's lost, but okay. Queen g8. Queen g8. He found a way to guard a8. Now, uh, threatening discovered checks. Not that threatening's the word, because there's nothing left on the board to pick up with them. I can move my king, I can play queen c4. But what's this? Queen a6 check. If he does anything apart from interpose his knight, I queen. He can't take both my queens at once. Queen a6 check, knight b6 check. And then his, his knight's in a terrible pin. That must be right. Queen a6 check. Well, no choice. Knight b6 check. Now I could go backwards with the king to b2. But what if I go forward? King b4. He's got to guard his knight. Either queen d8 or queen e6. It doesn't matter. And then I go forward again. I want to take the knight with the king. Yes, that's nice. I think that works beautifully. Let me see. King b4, queen e6, king b5, knight a8. I take the queens off. I play king c6. Now am I winning? f3, I stop with bishop e1. Now, he can't stop king b7 and takes knight on a8, but then he'll have his king on c8. But that doesn't matter, because I can put my bishop on g3 and move it there in... I can triangulate it back and forth to g3 and eventually he'll run out of pawn moves and be Zugzwang. Yes, it works beautifully. King b4. Well, not many moves. Must be queen e6. What else? No, nothing. Queen e6. Yes, right. Okay. King b5. Nothing to do. Must try to swindle him. f3 looks like it is threatening to... Queen with check. Let me play f3. Hmm. What's this? I just take the knight. He takes, I take f2. So we both queen and I win his queen again. Same routine. Plays f2. Hmm. Can, I can even take it. I don't understand. I just take the knight. Queen takes knight. Yes, yes. Now if I play f2, he takes that. That's nasty. If I exchange queens, I don't queen with check. So he wins my queen with that queen f8 check that has been there all the time. Yeah, there's nothing to do. <laughs> queen g3 was also lost. I think so, yes. Yeah, I mean, you, you play a7 and... Uh, Yes. Bishop e1. Bishop e1. Bent Larson has a reputation for sometimes trying too hard to avoid draws, and that was a game certainly he could have drawn and perhaps should have done. As it is, it gets Tony Miles off to a really flying start in Group B. Next week we see the second game in that group between last year's winner, Lothar Schmidt, and the Dutch Grandmaster, Hein Donner. Until then, from all of us here in Bristol, good night. Mm -hmm.